Come on, let's go. Move up and down, up and down. Good, good. Bigger fight every day like this. Showtime. Let's hey. go! On your mark, get set, go. go. Two weeks ago, the Biggest Loser contestants were faced with a choice. You will choose either Bob and Jillian or them. This season, there are two new trainers. Some chose to face the yellow line for the opportunity to train with Bob and Jillian, hoping to achieve the results that have been proven season after season, while the others chose four weeks of immunity and faced the unknown. We're going into the unknown, but it's going to be an exciting unknown. Placing their trust in two new trainers. Tara Castronova, and I'm one of the new trainers on this season of The Biggest Loser. I'm not a celebrity trainer. I don't have my own line of DVDs, but I'm a fighter, and I have everything to prove. When I was five years old, my dad taught me how to box in my garage with my brothers, and I started competing when I was 20. I was ranked number two in the country by USA Boxing. I won the Golden Gloves in New York twice. Nothing would make me happier than to train the next winner of The Biggest Loser because it means the world to me. When I hear that you don't think you're going to be here to the end, that breaks my heart. How much more do you have? Push, fight! Everybody has a fighter inside of them. They just don't realize it, but I see it. I grew up poor. My father passed away when I was 14. My mother got in a car accident a few years ago and passed away. Having a hard life has made me so much stronger. And these contestants are all strong deep down. I know you got it in you, Jeff. I'm here to bring back the fighter and each and every one of them. I'm Brett Hobel, one of the new trainers on this season's Biggest Loser. I've been in this industry for almost 20 years. I'm a fitness trainer and I'm also a motivator. I'm here to change people's lives and get people in shape. I'm a martial artist, do capoeira, muay thai, boxing, kickboxing. I've studied, I was a pre-med. There is a science to training. There's no guesswork on anatomy, physiology, kinesiology. It's called science. And I know what it's like to be fat. As an overweight teenager, I went through a lot of issues. It took a lot of blood, sweat, tears, a lot of mental, physical, and emotional work to get out of that, but that's what I want to show these contestants. Don't think, just do! To get in shape and to change your life, doesn't come free. You got to earn it. That if they want it bad enough, if they can change themselves mentally and emotionally right here, the rest will follow. <laughs> For the past two weeks, Brett and Kara have been pushing these contestants to fight in the battle of their lives. And they're proving it where it counts most on the scale. <laughs> Last week, the unknowns went head to head with contestants at the ranch. They beat them at the challenge. Congratulations, Anna! But at the weigh in, the ranch won big. Now, it's up to the unknowns to make a comeback. Who's gonna step up to the plate this week? Who? As we got done with the weigh-in, we had a chance to sit down and discuss what had happened. And there were some, you know, spotlights that needed to be put on some people. Q is one of them, and he fell short two weeks in a row. Q, six pounds isn't good enough. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I think you need to be called out on right here, right now. You're the only person this week that I didn't see put 100% in. It's time to get him to step up and be a man. Q, what was your weight loss last week and this week together? Where are you at? 17, 17 pounds. pounds. Moses, you know, he's lost 53 pounds. I'm at 49 pounds. You got better. You said how much you want to be here. Prove it. Nobody else out there but you. You're the man. Be the man in your heart. And it's time you take care of yourself. So right now, you're flatlining. You know, we all struggle with it. We all have this little uh, in our minds. But you know what? 
There's no reason why you shouldn't have the same drive that some of the rest of us have. You know, I don't know what your past is. I don't know a whole lot about you. But what I do know is that probably nobody ever drove you to be what you can be. And if that's what we have to do as a team, that's what we're going to do. You know, it's not all about you. I'm not trying to say I'm perfect, but when it comes right down to it, Austin, I was more disappointed in you today, too. Yeah. It's gut check time. It's gut check. You know, you might hate us, but I guarantee you'll love us one day for it because we all need call outs. Uh, and that's true, but I am searching for that light switch. I am searching for that drive within myself to get me to the point where I can go and endure the knee pain and all this other You know what? Let us help you. Let us pick you up and put you on our shoulders. And we're not gonna let you down. We're not gonna be there to let you fail. But you gotta come and give it all. Cause we're a team. I'm not competing against you, I'm loving you. We're holding you, every one of us is there. We expect only the best. Being an Olympic gold medalist, I know I still have the heart of a champion. A champion doesn't make an excuse of why he can't do something. You gotta make it a battle to make yourself better. Bring your best every day, please, because we need you. Last night was our weigh-in, and we beat the unknowns. So we are super pumped, but it's a new week. So I think a lot of us are really anxious and kind of nervous to see what is in store for us for this challenge. Welcome. Wait a second. Before we get started, not everybody is here yet. When we see the black van, one of my teammates says, oh, it's the bad guys. So. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, oh, here they come incognito. It's the unknowns. The unknowns. Black man. Now here they come rolling up in the dark, tinted window, black vans. You know, here come the bad guys. As you all can see, the competition is divided in two. On one half are the contestants training with Bob and Jillian. On the other, the unknowns, who are training with two brand new trainers off campus. You haven't been face to face since day one. Well, that changes today. One player from each group will win and they will meet face to face over dinner with Curtis Stone. Oh my God. Woo. OMG. People, this is huge. Curtis Stone is like carved out of cream cheese, the hottest thing you've ever seen. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, this is my challenge. This was a god set from heaven. I'm going to get to meet Curtis Stone. We're going to lock eyes, and you know, it's going to be fantastic. But you're not just there for dinner. Curtis is going to give the two winners a chance to compete for a two pound advantage at the weigh in. <sighs> The two pound advantage is critical for me. You know, I'm one of the lighter people here. So that two pounds is a huge percentage for me. Courtney, she wants to be here so bad and I don't want to let her down. So if I can have those extra two pounds, it would just take a lot of pressure off for me. Unknowns, since you don't need it now, that is a two pound advantage you will be able to hold on to when you return to campus. Today's pop challenge includes something that people cook with every single day. An egg and a frying pan. Your job is to balance the egg on the pan as long as you can. Oh, I guess there is just one more little detail. The frying pan will be upside down. <laughs> this is a mental game. This is totally a mental game, and I feel like I'm pretty strong mentally. Since January 2010, I've lost over 100 pounds. It's difficult. You have to work hard. I feel like if you can change your mind, you can pretty much change anything. So I'm like, my mom and I got this, because we know that we just have to focus on it, and we'll be OK. Let's do it. Who is going to be able to count calories? You know what the challenge is there? Whoever's last. Go. We decided to come together as a team and to keep our unity together. You know, really, Rue and I don't need that two-pound advantage. And so we felt like we would give it to somebody that earned it or deserved it. So, but we all know what we're doing, right? Yeah. We're, doing. we're all going to go down with flames if we have, you know, that's what it takes. Let's do it. Today it's not going to be pretty. One, two, three. Victory! It's coming, baby! 
Get ready. We're coming. I got you, gold medalist. Don't even start with me. Oh, no. <laughs> she don't know how much she got. You have no idea. <laughs> I can hear them talking to us, like, oh, we're going to beat you. We're going to beat you. This is the challenge. They just think that they're awesome. They think that they're better than us. All right, guys, good luck on your mark. Get set. Balance those eggs, because your time starts now. We're balancing our eggs on our frying pans, you know, just, just chilling there with our eggs. And I hear Rulon from the other side start counting. I hear him go, one, two, three. And all of a sudden, I see these eggs fly over from the other side, and they landed on our side. Oh, the entire unknowns launch their yeah. eggs at the on-campus yeah. players. <laughs> and Denny wins it for the unknowns. Danny works so hard in the gym. She works hard getting to the gym. And I, I know she's going to take this gift and just, you know, cherish it. It was so touching to me to see that, you know, they realized that I needed it. Two pounds can mean being above the yellow line when I go to the ranch. And now we are left with the on-campus players who are definitely taking this challenge seriously. We're on a different playing field than the other team is. The other team has four weeks of immunity. We're fighting week by week. So it's a different ball game for them than it is for us. Come on, calm down. Is that what I hit me? There goes Courtney, there goes yeah, Arthur. Yeah, keep them all hands steady, huh? Did that. <laughs> Jen is out. Mars still in this. Dan and Don. Irene and Jay. I'm watching that egg, pretending it's Curtis Stone's head, and I'm not never going to let his head hit the ground. And then all of a sudden, he's like, Hannah, please, Hannah! And I'm like, no! My date with Curtis Stone, my dreams have been crushed. No! Oh, sorry, Irene. And she returns the volley. I had this feeling that came about me that said, you've got to keep this egg on here for Courtney. You want to get this two pound advantage because our team is going to need it. So it was all I could do just to hold that egg on there for Courtney. There is Jay is out. Don is out. Marcy wins it for Team Aqua. Whoa, a little fancy. Congratulations, Marcy, you have won for Team Aqua, you have the opportunity to win a two pound advantage during your dinner with Curtis Stone. So proud of you. <laughs> I really believe that she'll pull out a win for the Aqua team for these two pounds and it'll hopefully make us safe this week and be above that yellow line and that's, that's what matters. Unknowns, you obviously decided as a group to select the pink team to have the opportunity to win a two pound advantage. So congratulations to you, Denny, and you, Marcy. Enjoy dinner with Curtis. Good job, everyone. I'll see you guys soon. Every year I get the privilege of talking to all of our contestants. Last week was the group on the ranch. Today it's going to be the unknowns. Hey, Laramie. Hey, is that right? How are you? I'm good. Hey, Q. Hello, sir. I serve as a wake-up call because Good. people have to realize that this disease, morbid obesity, is similar to a diagnosis of cancer. And they have to treat it as aggressively as they would some life-threatening infection or cancer. This is about saving their lives. First off, Q, you've got 248 pounds of excess fat. We have a way of estimating health risks, and we try to put in the damage that this excess fat is doing to how many years of life you have left. How old are you? 27. Let's see your biggest loser know your number health score. So I'm the body of a 51-year-old man at the age of 27 is scary because, because of my son, he means the world to me. I can miss out on a lot of things in his life. I just have to change it. Rulon, you're about 40% of your body is fat. And Justin, about 43% of your body is fat. You know, after all I've been through, I almost had the feeling there was nothing that my body couldn't recover from. There's nothing I couldn't handle. 
I survived the snowmobile accident. I survived a motorcycle wreck. I survived a plane wreck. I won two Olympic medals. But obesity was my biggest foe, and it is my biggest foe, and it's the thing that's gonna put me in an early grave. You were a world-class athlete. You beat a Russian that hadn't been beaten ever before. I mean, it was like one of the biggest Olympic moments ever. This is a different sort of battle, but I think that it's gonna take that same amount of courage. I wanna live life to the fullest, and I know I can't in this body. That's why I've come to ask for help and change my life. I'm scared for him. I was scared for him before we came here, but uh, the more I'm here, the more I'm scared for myself, too. You desperately need to be here. You've got prediabetes. You've got high blood pressure. I, I think I just, you know, I, I lied to myself about where I was at. Let's see what your estimated inner age is. Time. I got a lot left to do in life. I got a lot of people depending on me. I probably did come for the wrong reasons, but I'm here for the right ones now. You've got diabetes. You've got degenerative joint disease. You've got high blood pressure. Eight people in your family have had bypass surgery? Yes, eight. And what's happened with them? How have they done? Most of them are like me. They put their weight back on. Um, a couple of them have passed away. Austin, you're, you're more than a chip off the old block. I hate to say this, but you're beating your old man at every one of these weight gain games. You've got more excess hydrated fat than him now. Your blood pressure is worse than him. You're 20. So you're riding this wave of obesity-related diseases 10, maybe 15 years before your dad. When we put your numbers into this whole system, You got so much to live for. What are you doing? Throwing it away. It tears me up. I love him. And I don't want him to deal with the same stuff I'm dealing with. That's why we're here. Absolutely. I wanted to start with you, Sarah. Out of everybody that we took on this year's show, 22 individuals, you have the highest body fat of anyone we have. Wow, I did not know that. Rulin has a body fat of 40%. Sarah is 58%. I had no idea. You have an almost abnormal lack of muscle tissue. After my car accident, I haven't used uh, my legs hardly at all, except to get me from A to B. This is shocking. A few years ago, I was in a car accident that left me, you know, in recovery for a long time on a bed without the ability to walk or use my legs, and my muscles atrophied really bad. And I have used that as a reason to not be able to exercise or not take care of myself. I just, I just felt so upset with myself and really ashamed. Your metabolic rate is the lowest of anybody here. Understandably, because you've got no fat burning engine. So we have to do things differently with you. But it, it takes a daily effort. And for people like you that are gonna lose over 100 pounds, you're probably gonna have to put in 90 minutes a day, six days a week for the rest of your life. And if that's not worth it to you, then probably you should go pack your suitcase and go home tonight. Oh, it's worth it. You have a number of significant medical problems. Your risk of having a stroke in the next five years, 49%. Your risk of being a full-fledged diabetic is 90%. I mean, you are just knocking on the door of sudden death from so many different angles. I'm just like my uncles. My uncles on my mom's side, they all died from the early 40s to the early 50s. 
made me realize I'm living the same life that they are. And I don't want my family to have to go through that. Based on this litany of problems, we're estimating that you're going to die soon. And we even can project the day you're going to die. I was definitely planning on having my dad still with me. And to see that number, it's hard. The longer I've been here, I realize how selfish I've been. That is eye-opening. It's in your control. I'm going to do everything I can to go way past that date. Instead of being that date where we're supposed to put me into the ground, that's a day we're going to have a big party. I'm going to stand up there strong and proud, holding your kids, letting them know they have a strong grandpa here. It's going to be a great day. Coming up, it's time to see the new trainers in action. And they're not pulling any punches. Who's going to step up to the plate this week? Go! Ah, yeah, ah, ah, ah. Ah. Beat him up! The perfect way to train people for a comeback is getting them in the ring. <laughs> Who's next? I can't believe we lost the win, man. Three pound advantage? I know. Let's just take all this energy right now and just give them a really good workout. Get on top of them. Good can't... workout? I'm going to kick their ass is what I want to do. I know. It can't happen again. Even though we have immunity this week, it's my job to make these people lose weight, immunity or not. I'm not going to let them down. Who's going to step up to the plate this week? Go! I'm going to make a change. Ah! Yeah. Beat him up! It's about teaching them that comebacks happen in this game and they happen in life. Come back, Justin. Boom! It's rumble time. One, two, harder! It's comeback. Yeah. Payback. Yeah. Give it to us! There's a 15, let's go! And out of anybody else this week, I see myself as the one who has the most to prove to everyone. Yeah, you're up. Let's do it. So, uh, he was definitely a fighter. He's strong. He has a lot deep down that I'm trying to bring out of him. Go! Come on, Q. I'm here. Go! Go! Keep going. Hands up! I'm seeing progress in Q, but it's up to him in the end. Yeah. Oh. You feel good? I do. Everything that's popping in my head is all that Dr. H talked about. I don't want to reach the age of 51 and, and die. Go! Every workout we do, all I'm thinking is how I'm changing my life and I'm pushing him to change his life. Come on! What it comes down to is, is really my motivation, my wife and my girls. And I'm going to keep going because that's who I'm doing it for. Nice. I want you screaming like that. Ah! 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 Treat it like it's your last chance! perfect way to train people for a comeback is getting them in the ring. And it's like a street fight. Good job. Good job. You dug yourself into this hole, you gotta fight your way out of it. I got you down here. Yeah. I got you down here, Justin. Get up, brother. Everything that Dr. H said to me made me think, I'm gonna hit the gym even harder. I'm gonna push myself that much more to take my life back. Who's next? I have two projects this week. It's Sarah and Austin. Today is such a wake-up call for Sarah. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. She is 58% body fat. I didn't even know you could be 58% body fat, more than half your weight. Seven, strong, six. She has to work that much harder, and it's just going to take more time. Is it doable? Yes. But are you going to have to train harder than everyone else? Hell yes. Choosing the unknown trainers is hands down the best decision I could have made. You made the right choice and I and I feel that like so strongly because you guys are fighters and you're gonna teach me how to fight, not just physically, but fight for what I want. They know what they're doing. 
They love us, they support us, and, uh, and they, they beat us to the ground. <laughs> Show me tight. Take the pain. Here we go. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, <laughs> four. One more. When Austin's in the ring, he has these moments, these explosive moments of strength. <laughs> <laughs> And then he gets tired and he loses his focus. On your stomach. You've got to learn how to really suck it up and focus when you're fatigued. Show me the spirit. Come on, all the way down, Austin. Because they're going to have a bad day at work. You're going to have an argument with your family and you can't just go to the food again. Get up. Get up, brother. Get up. There's a lot of pressure this week. Last week, I didn't pull a great number. So I'm being faced with this challenge of, can I push myself? Austin, aren't you? Come on, dude. I'm expecting double digits from Austin. One, two, slip, slip. And from Q. Up, up, down, up, down. And they are going to pay the dues that they need to to get those double digits. Hard right hand, 10 of them. One, two, breathe, three, heave, four. Brett and I are the unknown trainers. These contestants took a leap of faith coming to train with us. Two, one, one. These contestants are all so strong deep down, each and every one of them. And when they leave here, they're all gonna know that and they're gonna take that with them and just thrive. We're here to not just change our lives, we're here to change the world. You know, call out America. Let's go, baby. It comes down to drawing the line in your life, changing it and not allowing yourself to cross that line again. This isn't a workout, this is, this is war. Where's the power? Let's go, Austin. This desire to be better, this desire to have children and, and be a better wife, better husband, and we all want it so bad. We want the life change so bad. Get off, Taylor! That for ourselves, we're gonna push it. Let's go! Come back. Come back. Okay, we're gonna be going through a series of weight work and cardio work. And Dan and Don, Jillian's gonna take you for a hike. All right, Biggest Loser Circuit workout begins now. Begin, let's go. You were at your station for one minute. We're in week three now, week three. Last week, no one from our side went home. But this week, there's no way that that's going to happen again. Two, one, switch, let's go. You decide whether you're worth it enough, and you decide whether you want to have a strong, effective workout, or you just want to skate by today, OK? <clears throat> and one, rotate. Fighting for ourselves is so important this week. OK, come on. Let's go. You can do this. And doing every single thing that we can do in that gym is the most important thing that you can do here on this ranch. So that's what I'm doing here every single day, and I hope to get another big number this week. Good form, Jen. Ha! I've lost 28 pounds so far in a two-week period, and this is an opportunity to take my life back. I have been overweight since I was five years old. I feel like I've lived my life in a fat suit, this is it. It is time. There's no turning back now. Keep going, everyone. Head four toward me. That's it. Burn. Seven, six, good. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch. Nice. Let's go. I want to talk to the purple team, but here's what I want you to do. Rowers or ladder? Those are, the, those are your two choices. All right, come on outside with me. So here we are in week three, and these guys know their diet. They've got their exercises down. Now it's time to dig in their head and see why they got here in the first place. When we were at the weigh-in the other night, I kept looking at you, and you were very discouraged, especially when you two both stepped up on the scale and lost six pounds apiece. So I just want to know where, what you were feeling at that moment. I was surprised and I was mad because I felt like I worked harder than a six mm -hmm. and it's sad because at home I would have been thrilled with a six pound I've never lost six pounds in a week in my entire life mm -hmm. right I just don't want you to lose sight of of the bigger picture here like what brought you here Hannah what, what are you looking for I want my life back what does that mean I mean I was an athlete in college and I was so strong I was just so strong and I, I did so well all through high school and then I had an accident and I my sports career was over, and I started to gain weight, and then I literally hated myself for years. 
I was an athlete with a dream and a goal, and I was reaching every goal that I put my hand to. Growing up, my dad and I had a dream. He was a college athlete. I wanted to be a college athlete. We had a dream, and I wanted to make it to the Olympics so bad. We watched it together. And I just feel like I worked so hard, and then I had the accident, and it was all over. Before, I was jump serving volleyballs, and I know I couldn't even bend over to pick up one. So I just, I just gave up. I just, I laid in that bed, and I just was like, I'm just going to go to sleep. And, and I did. I slept through the past 12 years of my life. Why do you think you gave up after the accident? And you... Because I felt like sports was the only thing I was really, really good at. And that was something that my dad and I really bonded over. And we had dreams of, like, Olympia. I mean, we just had all these really high. And it was like, when he came to the hospital and saw me, it was like, I just felt like I let him down. If I could just have one more game, looking up in the stands and seeing him so proud of me and telling everyone that that's his daughter, and it, that all was over. To lay to rest dreams and aspirations are really, really hard. And you've had to do it. But now we have to find out what your new dreams are. It's time to make the dreams come true. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. You sure, it's not too late. Go back to that treadmill. <laughs> I wanted to pull Dan and Dawn out of the gym because it's clear to me that they're just not engaged. Their teammates have noticed it. I've noticed it. Bob's noticed it. And you know, it's a matter of time before they either quit or get sent home. And I'm wondering how much they've actually learned. So, guys, how's everything? Good. That's good. It's uh. We're both ex extremely homesick and dealing with that because mm -hmm. there's some separation anxiety with me and my little girl, you know. But it's been so much more difficult than I anticipated. I need my wife and my daughter more than I need air. This has been the most difficult, emotional, and mental challenge, second only to the passion of my son. Dan, tell me this. How long ago did you lose your son? Six years ago. How old was he? 24. What happened? <sighs> My son had a drug problem, and we dealt with it for, oh, a year and a half or two years, and we were winning, and everything was great. I talked to him every day. Um, one day, I didn't talk to him, and um, he was dead. And he called me. And then I called you, and uh, it's the one great failure of my life, so I, I think about him every day. I, silently. Yeah, silently. Silently. So. Why silently? Is it because you don't want to burden anyone with it? I don't want to hurt anybody else. A person know, loses a child. Yes. And it could be that week or a year later or six years later. Yes. And you go to sleep at night, you don't think about it. And then the morning you wake up, and just before you wake up, just before you realize you're awake and the whole world's not clear to you, just at that very moment, you remember. And he died, and you go over it all over again. Well, there's no reason for me to subject anybody to that. I'll deal with it. There's no reason to. I'll deal with it. That is why you're here. I'm not making that anybody is the else sad. That Grieving is cathartic. Mm -hmm. It's the reason people go to the movies. It's the reason people watch this television show. They want to feel something. They want to see and relate to other people. You're not healing. You're not. You're not. And you're asking me how you get that lesson. This is the first step. Not grieving silently anymore. You know, I, I can't speak to what it would be like to lose a child. I can only imagine that it, it would be the worst possible thing on the planet that could happen to someone. And I worry for Dan that if he doesn't process this tragedy, it will ultimately take his life as well because that's what's happening. I'll be more in tune with some of my own personal needs and yes. we'll go from there. Marcy, how are you? I am so excited to meet Curtis Stone. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I also get the opportunity to have a two pound advantage. Come on in. Thanks for having us. Welcome to my kitchen. I think we've got one more guest, don't we? Here she is. Hey, Danny. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Oh, nice to meet you, too. Come on over. So you guys know each other? We've met. We do. <laughs> we stood next to each other in the 5K. Oh, really? Our first challenge. In your first challenge. See, 
Finding Marcy was really hard because we are friends. We're both moms. We have this connection. And now we're on opposite sides. We're rivals. So I've got to set friendship aside at this point because it's two pounds involved and our team really needs this. Well, today I thought what we'd do is I'd cook you a beautiful lunch. But don't worry, I'm not going to kill you with calories. It'll still be nice and healthy. Okay. What I want you to do is pay special attention because at the end of this, to win the two pound advantage, what you're going to have to do is tell me how many calories is in the food that we prepared together. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, get your aprons on. <laughs> so the salad's the first thing we're going to cook. What I've gone for is a roasted acorn squash, which is really sweet naturally. We're going to roast it and serve it with arugula, some pomegranate, and a really light dressing. What I'm going to do is show you how to attack this guy. So you cook this at home. It's one squash I've never cooked because it, it looked too difficult. <laughs> well, we would put butter in the middle with a little um, brown sugar and bake them. Yep. But, you know, that's tasty once in a while, as long as there's not too much butter going into it. The amazing thing for me about Biggest Loser is you take people that have a terrible relationship with food, and by the end of the show, my goal is to have them have a good relationship with food. Don't see this as a time that you have to be on this extreme diet. See it as a time of learning. I find this with some people that come to The Biggest Loser. They get there and they're like, OK, all I can eat is two slices of turkey breast right. and oh. a few lettuce leaves. It's like this big punishment they're putting on themselves. And unfortunately, what happens is once you've gone through that weight loss, the tendency is that you'll go back to eating the same stuff that you used to, which means you have to sort of tell yourself you're going to experiment with new flavors, experiment with new ingredients, new cooking methods. So the first thing we're going to do is throw this in the oven because it's going to take a little bit of time. What we've got next is a dressing. I've got some sherry vinegar, two teaspoons of extra virgin olive oil, a little shallot, pomegranate seeds, some pine nuts. One of the hardest things was to do the math. I was so interested in everything he was saying, but I'm trying to figure out the calories at the same time. And then I've got some arugula. And of course, arugula is your friend. You can eat as much arugula as you like. The great thing about different lettuces is the amount of uh, calories you actually burn while you're consuming them is equivalent to the amount of calories in there, maybe even better. So it's almost a negative calorie food. It is, it is. There's not many of them, but that's one. Let me check this uh, roasted squash. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, that mm, very it's nice beautiful. Food. Toss that straight on in. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> So, our salads are done. Oof. And now I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing quinoa dish. So for the entree, I want it to be a really delicious dish. I've got quinoa in there, which is full of protein, and we're going to serve it with a pan-seared piece of halibut. And I'm going to marry them by bringing a little bit of a parsley uh, vinaigrette. Just a teaspoon of oil, and you just place that. And those are four ounces a piece? Four ounces a piece. Who would have thought that you can cook two pieces of fish in a pan with just a teaspoon of oil. Mm -hmm. Right. But you can. You really can. Our contestants here at The Biggest Loser are facing a bunch of challenges because they're used to having diets that are really high in salt, really high in fat. And let's face it, that stuff can be really tasty. So what I've got to do is try and re-educate their diets and re-educate their palates a little bit. So you put no salt in this whole meal? Zero. That's amazing. All right, well, I think, guys, we are just about there. And I think you guys are really going to love this. That is beautiful. What do you beautiful. think? I love it. Okay, let's I do it. I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> Lunchtime. Okay. Yeah, the best okay. time of the day. I'm going to go and start getting organized so we can make a dessert after. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Oh, delightful. Mmm. It's delicious. It's really good. So how's everything going? How are you doing over there? The trainers are awesome. Are they? But they appreciate when you're really working your hardest. Yes. They can see they're really sweet. The trainers are really, really sweet. I was trying to make Marcy a little jealous. I told her about the trainer because we know Bob and Jillian produce big numbers. But these trainers are just amazing. What do you think, ladies? Delicious. Fantastic. Oh. Tasty? So Very good. tasty. We've still got one dish to do, OK? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You ready for this? I'm ready. What we're going to do is a pear dessert. So first things first, we need to peel our pear, cut it right in half, just like that. And then I've got some flavorings, cinnamon, star anise, and then this, my favorite, is a vanilla bean. And then we're going to get a little bit of sweetness from some orange juice. How, how much orange that juice about was a half that? a cup? So that was half a cup, a cup of apple cider, and then you pick it up and you poach it nice and slowly. While that's happening, what I've got over here is a little bit of Greek yogurt, two tablespoons, some orange zest, and we're going to serve this with a tablespoon of toasted almonds and a reduction of the poaching liquid. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of ingredients here. Maybe if we could have had a few less ingredients, it might have been easier to it calculate. Been, yeah, my mind is to you get the best of me. To count? Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm a wreck. There's no doubt about it. I've been nervous. 
I've had all these things running through my head. I'm trying to watch him. He's just a wonderful, nice person, but gorgeous at the same time. Let me just wipe your brow a little bit. Okay. My mind isn't as clear as it should be. I probably counted each dish at least five times. And that is your oh. poached pear dessert. It's Can't wait. You can both have a taste right now. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. It's delicious. This is better than ice cream. But who would have thought you could get something so sweet without adding a single piece of really sugar? Not. That glaze is so sweet. Isn't it delicious? It's so good. Did you want a bite? Yeah, I'd love one. Mm. <laughs> I'd love to share with you, but it's just too good. <laughs> okay, so you enjoyed the dessert. Delicious. Very, uh, very, oh, I'm perfect. glad. Very good. Now, I hope you've been paying careful attention to how many calories you think's in each course because you're both going to have to give me an estimate and whoever gets the closest to the correct amount of calories in all three dishes is going to win themselves a two-pound advantage, which at this stage of the game is huge. Who's going to start? I'll start. Okay, let's hear from you. One of my toughest ingredients was the quinoa. I don't cook with it at home, so I don't know if it was right or not. That could throw me off about 30 calories. I think the, uh, the total was 480. 480 calories, okay. I added up everything, and I'm thinking, this has got to be over 500 calories. But I'm also thinking, no, they're not going to go that high. So I lowballed it. 440. 440? Well, you're both close guesses. But the actual calorie count for all three dishes was 572. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank two you. Thank pounds. you so much. I won a two pound advantage. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited on so many levels. You were close. We're That's close. <laughs> well, listen, I hope you both enjoyed learning a bit more about healthy food. Keep working hard. Keep eating right. Keep up the good work. Thank you so Thank much. You. Very nice, nice meeting you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Come on, get out of here. Okay. Now, if you're counting calories and you don't want to get in trouble with salads, what you need to do is make your own dressings. A big way people make mistakes when they're eating salads and thinking they're doing something healthy is they cover in really calorific dressings. So make your own dressings. All you need is a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of olive oil. It's that simple. Go on, get making a salad. Earlier on The Biggest Loser, news from Dr. H fueled the unknowns to take their lives back. You desperately need to be here. This is not enough time. I had a lot left to do in life. And coming up, Bob and Jillian put the black team in the hot seat. If I was above the yellow line, I would take someone else's place and let them stay. You can't just be like, you know what, I'm prepared to fall on the sword. I understand, but... Oh, just... That's all. And Dan fights back. I can succeed without them. Damn it, you're not going to sit in a room and tell me that I'm going to fail, because I'm not. Good morning, everyone. We see these big basins, and I'm hoping hot tub, yes. But it wasn't a hot tub. <laughs> no, it's never a hot tub. Well, last week, you all worked together. This week, it's the opposite. By now you know there is no secret to success. You need to hit the gym, eat right, and you need plenty of water. Trust me, today you're gonna have it by the barrel. Here's how today's challenge is gonna work. You will pump water into a cue drum. It's a device designed to carry water in remote parts of the world. You will then roll it around the bend and dump it out into someone else's barrel. Once your barrel is full, you're out of this game. The last team standing wins. You know, this challenge involves us pinning each team against, you know, each other, and, and it's bittersweet. Like, no, none of us want to do that. That's, that's not what we stand for. That's not what we're about here. This challenge won't be easy. It's a quarter of a mile there and back. And when the cue drums are filled with water, they weigh over 100 pounds. 100 pounds of water. This is going to be like trudging through quicksand. But all that work will definitely be worth it because the winning team gets the only vote at this week's elimination. To know that only one person is going to have a vote at this week's elimination and someone is going home, it's a little bit scary to think about that. Irene, you don't have a teammate. You are competing by yourself. This won't be easy. 
won't be easy for anyone. Let's get started, guys. A lot riding on this. I will see you at the finish line. On your mark, get set, go! Go to the front. Yes, yes, there you go. Good job. This is straight up Little House on the Prairie style. I thought it would be easy to pump the water, but it comes out so slow. Here we go, Parp, here we go. I'm getting every last drop I can get in here. My dad was like, no, don't fill it up, don't fill it up the first time. And I'm like, why not? I'm almost 200 pounds lighter than I was a couple years ago. It ain't nothing for me to carry 100 extra pounds up that hill. Here we go. Go, guys. Okay. The first trip of the hill, I'm running. And once I hit the really steep part, I'm like, I'm crazy for doing this. I'm just being stupid. Oh, OK, I'm not running. How's it feel? She wanted me to walk, but I couldn't do that. Courtney at a jog. Irene and Courtney racing. I lost 100 pounds before coming here, so I want to keep going down every single day. And running up a mountain is going to help me get there. Irene filling up blue team. Courtney also dumping her water into the blue team barrel. These ladies have arranged a plan. And I know that Arthur was really struggling. He's carrying 200 more pounds than a lot of us. So we decided we were going to take out the blue team first. You're doing fine, baby. I'm so proud of you. Going uphill, just it's, it almost seemed impossible. Purple team also adding to the blue team barrel. Arthur and Jesse might not get one trip up this hill. Purple team sends blue team out of this competition. Ah, purple, yes. Purple, purple. Ah. Blue's out. I'm a competitor. I really am, and I don't like to lose anything. But I didn't want this power. If you win this, it's gonna put a big old target on your back. Carrying 600 pounds up there here. We're very strong girls, every single one of us, and we all work together, and it makes us even stronger. Aqua team adding to the black team's barrel. Looks like purple lined up, add to the black team's barrel. Looks like the aqua team and purple team working together on a strategy here. The unknowns are our enemies right now, and until they come back, we have to stick together. Marcy, what's the plan here? We're working together to keep Orange in the game. Orange is our spokesperson today. Everyone agreed on that. We did. Including Irene? Okay. Yes. Basically, we decide that we're going to knock teams off one by one, but we knew that Irene would be the last person standing so she could have the only vote this week. Irene's the only one that's really ever faced an elimination, so she really is the perfect candidate to be able to have the final say-so, and I think that she's going to respect what other people want. Right now, it looks like purple, green, black, and aqua are very close to being eliminated. The only person who doesn't have any water in their barrel is the orange team. The reason why we work as one big team is because you can't do it alone the whole time. Go for it, Irene. You got it, hon. It does take teamwork. And the more trust we have between one another, that's going to help us. Here comes Irene with another full yeah. cue drum. You know, I'm really honored they have that much trust in me to make the right decision. Purple, aqua, orange, green. Good job. You doing OK? Almost there. We got full tank. Almost there, guys. Purple's out. Black team is out. Come on, Irene. And Irene on her way to taking out the green team. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Irene, you won! I just think that today's challenge was really proof how strong we are and how, you know, we remain united no matter what. Good job, baby! Irene, congratulations. You have won this challenge, which means you have the only vote at this week's elimination. Looks like the rest of the group put a lot of faith in you, hoping you make the right decision at that elimination. You ready for that responsibility? <sighs> yes. I mean, we've all talked about, you know, who needs to stay here, and that's what they did for me, and I would do it for them in a heartbeat, so. All right, well, good job today. Thank I will you. see you on the scale. Thank you. Thank Allison. you. Good job, right. you guys. Good job, guys. Go. Oh, well, it was good. Yeah. It was very well. We decided that we were going to do this together and pick a winner before we even started. So we turned Whoa. it into a team challenge. Yes. Yeah, so it was cute. a team effort. And so at this week's weigh-in, Irene gets the one vote for whoever gets eliminated. Okay, we all know what 
each team wants, and so. What does, what does that team mean? want? If it's the blue team, I want to go home so Arthur stays. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I feel like there was some sort of general. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Like, I thought it was like, oh, somebody like, wants to go why home. Why do I not know kind of a thing. Well, we do have that too, but. <laughs> why do we still have that? How do we, how do we still have that? I made no secret about it. I've been missing my daughter and my wife so much, so I'm going to stay here as long as I can stay here. But if it happens that I go home tomorrow, well, I'm prepared for that. What's it like um, here on a daily basis that you're so ready to go home? It's not a question of being ready to go home. It's, or or I'm, want I'm prepared. to go home. No, it's not I don't want to go home. I'm prepared. And I know that you should have this never say die. You know, we're all soldiers going into battle and everybody's going to survive. But in my world, that's just not the case. And so I always have a plan B. I think he doesn't want to see anybody go home where he feels that he could go home, be his daughter's dad, and still do this. Stop buying that. You know, you've got a lot of work to do. I think you two have more work to do here than anyone else in this room. And I think that you're so afraid of that and dealing with that reality that you're living, you know, in a future that hasn't occurred yet and you're missing the benefits of the now. I understand, but... but okay? No, just... That's all. That's all. So it's okay to have a plan B. It's okay to think things through. However, now you need to be firmly rooted in the current moment. You're here now, Dan. Don't prepare yourself for your plan B. You're still in plan A right now, Dan. Yeah. Live in plan A. Don't be thinking about plan B. Because the plan before was sending you to your funeral. If I was above the yellow line and they would let me, I would uh, take someone else's place and let them stay. You can't just be like, you know what, I'm prepared to fall on the sword for Arthur. No Based one's going to on fall what? on the sword. Based on what? If we're below the yellow line, one of us will go home. That's the rule. We follow the rules. Yeah. I thought we'd been through this already. You know, I thought we'd been over and over this, actually. And now Dan is right back to square one and he's avoiding everything and acting like a martyr. I could have taught you how to count calories in five minutes. We're not gonna get anywhere else with this today. So, what should we do? Last chance workout. Okay. Last chance workout, guys. Last chance yeah. workout, baby. Okay, Dan, so we're in the gym right now. Do you know where all the exits are? <laughs> Last week, you were lucky. No one went home. This week, we're not so lucky. One person's going to have to go home. Make sure that you work hard so it's not you. I want these legs to be burning a little bit right now, you guys. One person's going home. One person is going home this week. Bob and Jillian were absolutely, totally convinced that I could not succeed unless I follow exactly what they say. They have a proven track record, but that doesn't negate the fact but I can succeed without them. I won't fail. Damn it. I'm a 30-year veteran of a police department. I'm a captain. Last hands workout. Let's go. Seven, six. I supervise life and death situations. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it right there. You're not going to sit in a room and tell me that I'm going to fail. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Because I'm not. It doesn't come for free, girls. This does not come for free. Now, when I ask you how long can you go, you say all day long. Last chance workout, let's go, ha! Huh? How are you feeling, Miss Irene? I'm good. You lost 10 pounds last week. You nervous about this one? A little bit. My mom's already gone, so it's one bad week and I'm going home. So there's really no slacking. It's balls to the walls. How long are we gonna be here? All day! All day long. How long? All day long. Come on, let's go. Move up and down, up and down, up and down. I need these legs to not stop. I just need to keep these legs moving. 349, that's, that's what we're looking for tomorrow? Chip off. Let's go, step up. I haven't seen 350 in a long time, so I decided, OK, I'm going to push myself hard this week and go for dropping 15 pounds. Higher. Ugh. Higher. Ugh. Higher. Ugh. So. I put this permanent marker on my arm. It's a constant reminder, and it mentally keeps me uh, in the game. Three, two, other leg. There are times during the last chance workout that I feel like, I don't know if I can keep going. And I look over at Courtney, and I forget about the pain that I'm going through because she actually has inspired me through this whole process. Good speed, Courtney. Up and down, up and down. 
What did you and your mom lose last week? I lost 10, she lost 6. And we're doing it again this week. And with the two pound advantage. With the two pound advantage. How do you feel about having, having that two pound advantage in your pocket? I like having it, but it doesn't mean anything to me. I came here to lose weight, mm -hmm. not to have advantages. You got your head on straight, babe. You got your head on straight. It's awesome to have a two-pound advantage, but I'm here to lose weight, and that's what I'm going to do. Stepping up and off, up and off. Anyone that's watching this show right now can see that it doesn't matter where you are. You can be 500 pounds sitting on that couch at home, and you think that you've dug yourself so deep in a hole that you can't get out of it. You can't, because I've been that 435-pound person before, and I dug myself out of that hole, and I'm still digging, and I'm going to be shining. Good. Fast pace now. Burn them out. Keep your spot in this house. Keep your spot in this house. Just trying to catch my breath. You're talking as clear as you always do. You have your breath, Arthur. How come my heart feels like it's beating out my chest? Well, it's not. Step up. 10. I feel really good this week. We've pushed our bodies farther than we've ever pushed this week. Last chance workout. And so I'm actually really excited about this weight. I'm not nervous. Purple just has to stay above the yellow line. That's right. Two, one. Everybody on a treadmill. Seven, eight, last chance. Nine, ten. That's excellent. Welcome back into the gym, my friend. Welcome back into the gym. 5 0. -oh. Here we go. All five of you together, we're going to press up. Begin now. Go. 15, 14, 13. This last chance uh, workout is very important for me today, particularly. Somebody's going home. And it's not going to be it ain't you. me. I have not been able to get into the gym all week. Today is very imperative that I leave everything I have in the gym. And that's my plan. Light it up, light it up, light it up. Light it up, Hannah, go! Faster! Here, 10, 9, 8. Last chance workout! 5, 4, dig, 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 3. This last chance workout, I happened to look over from my apparatus and my boy is running. I mean, he was stopping. Two, one. Oh, he did puke. That's sweet. Last week, you had to beat the unknown players to keep everyone here safe. You did that. This week, it's a whole different ball game. Maybe that's a good thing. Just moments ago, we weighed in the unknown, and they had another incredible week. I'm pushing, and I'm pushing, and I'm fighting so hard to be here. I'm fighting so hard to be a part of everything that's here. I'm not here to let myself down again. We're waiting for that fire just to light you up. And you need to find that. You need to find it. I think you've started to, but I don't think you're even close to what you can be. One player lost 19 pounds. I definitely got my mind on the right track. Another player has lost 64 pounds in three weeks. But like I said, you're not competing against them. The teams around you are your biggest threats. But this week, you certainly didn't act like it. You decided as a group to let Irene win the challenge and give her the only vote at this week's elimination. As long as Irene stays above the yellow line, she will be the only person to vote at tonight's elimination. Irene will decide who stays and who goes? Irene, if you fall below the yellow line, since you don't have a partner, you will be automatically eliminated. So, let's start the weigh-in. Marcy, you and Courtney have a two pound advantage. Let's get Aqua Team up here and see how you did. Even though Courtney and I have a two pound advantage, it's not a guarantee. 
We don't want to use that as a crutch. It's a gift, and hopefully it'll help us out in the long run, but it's still scary because we know somebody's going home. Courtney, your previous weight was 298 pounds. Marcy, your previous weight was 218 pounds. Your current weight is... You did not just flinch on me, Courtney. I did. She grimaced at losing six pounds, Bob. Well, I mean, Courtney's a big girl. And she's worked really, really hard. I mean, I grimaced too, a little bit. You know, I, six is, you know, six pounds is six pounds. And it needs to be more. Um, and next week it will be. Like, that's just how I have to look at it. I hope we don't fall below. I don't know. I just have to keep my head up about it and know that I just have to keep working hard every day, one day at a time. Courtney's been on this journey for a long time, and she's pushing hard. And there's going to be weeks like this, so I'm proud of you, Courtney. I, I, don't, I don't want her to go home. I don't want to go home myself, but I definitely don't want her to go home. All right, Aqua Team, thank you. Thank you. Even though six is a low number in this house, um, for me, six pounds is is huge on my journey. I've lost 143 pounds in a little bit over a year. And I know that next week my number is going to be bigger and it's going to add to that. I love this journey and I'm, I'm here till the end. Aqua Team, you lost 13 pounds this week. But with your two pound advantage, your total percentage of weight loss is 2.91%. We have five teams left to weigh in. Irene, as long as you don't have the lowest percentage of weight loss tonight, you will have the only vote at this week's elimination. So let's get you on that scale and see how you did. I'm really nervous. I'm really nervous going up there. I don't have a partner to take the fall for me. If I fall below the yellow line, I'm going home. Irene, in order to beat the Aqua Team, you need to have lost more than six pounds. Your previous weight was 232 pounds. Your current weight is. Irene, in order to beat the Aqua Team and guarantee that you are above that yellow line right now, you need to have lost more than six pounds. Your previous weight was 232 pounds. Your current weight is. Whoa. I'll take that. <laughs> so you do have a difficult decision ahead. Certainly, you have a wonderful thing to celebrate. Yeah, thanks. Irene, in three weeks on campus, you have lost a total of 31 pounds. The Orange Team lost eight pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 3.45%. Congratulations, Irene. That is enough to keep you above that yellow line, and you will have the only vote at tonight's elimination. I'm excited that I get to stay. Then immediately right after, I'm like, oh, crap, now I have to eliminate someone. That's going to be hard. Up next is the green team. Come on up. Tonight, uh, my goal is to lose 15 pounds. That's all I'm thinking. I'm not worried about the unknowns, anybody else. I've got 349 written on my arm that everybody's seen all week long. I stuck my neck out. I need to lose 15 pounds or really close to it because I'm going to feel like a fool if I don't. Jay, as you were walking up here, I couldn't help but notice. Do you have something written on your forearm? 349. That's my goal for the weigh-in today. It's pretty aggressive. It's 15 pounds. Well, I'm seeing reaction from both Bob and Jillian about this. Oh, I saw, I've seen it every day. He's like, 349, Bob. 349. I'm like, big dreams. Love it. I love those big dreams. <laughs> I never want to stop them from, like, shooting for the stars. I just want to make sure that, like, you go into it with no expectations. Let's see what the scale says. The green team needs to have lost more than 17 pounds. Green team. 
your current weight is. The numbers are rolling and all of a sudden it stops, 350 pounds, and I jump for joy, hands in the air. I'm like, I will take it. I'll take that all day long. Congratulations, Green Team. You will be here for one more week. Good job. It is the best moment I've had so far on the scale. It just felt so good. And best of all, we're safe. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Jay, in three weeks, you have lost 50 pounds. That feels great. Jen, in three weeks, you have lost 36 pounds. Oh. Thank you. Oh my God. Green team, you lost 22 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 3.58%. Congratulations. At this point, we could possibly be below the yellow line. I think the thing that makes me the most nervous is that if we do fall below, I will go home, and Courtney's gonna feel bad, and I don't want her to feel bad because she really has uh, made it happen for me because every time I look over at her, I push myself harder. We have three teams left to weigh in. Up next, the blue team. Gentlemen, come on up. As I'm walking up to the scale, I'm reflecting back on the fact that uh, in week one, I only, I only lost seven pounds. It's imperative that I do my part as a team member to get a big number because he needs to stay here. Arthur, you are willing a certain number to appear on that scale. You see it, you beat it. So what's the number? 446. It was tough. I was only able to get in the gym twice. But, how was Michael Phelps out there this week? All right, guys. In order to beat the Aqua team, be above that yellow line right now, you need to have lost more than 21 pounds as a team. Blue team, your current weight is... All right, guys, in order to beat the Aqua team, be above that yellow line right now, you need to have lost more than 21 pounds as a team. Blue team, your current weight is... I can't feel good. No, and don't feel good at all. It's all right. I'm with you. Yeah, but four pounds, man. One of us are going home. Well, I mean, A, you haven't been able to be at the gym. B, you've been on antibiotics. And C, uh, which I think is the most important one, Dr. Izenga has been the one that's been like way up in your calories. Boom, four pound weight loss. He's lost four. We'll take it. It's a setback. Right, Jesse, but what we're, what we're upset about is that your son, if he walks out this door tonight, that's a bad thing. We need your son to be in this house until the bitter end. And this throws a real wrench into, the, into this mix. He needs to be here a long time, Jesse, a long time. So let's not celebrate four pound weight loss. We just can't do it. Hey, 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 it's all right. You'll get it next time. You're good, Arthur. I promise this will never happen again. I couldn't celebrate Arthur's four pounds because Arthur losing four pounds means that he is very close to going home. And Arthur can't go home. This is life or death for him. Blue team, you lost 13 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 1.75%. Aqua team, with one team below you, you are definitely safe from elimination. You will be here for one more week. 
blue team, we have two teams left to weigh in. Up next, the purple team. Ladies. There's so much going through your head at this point. And so I literally have to stop and take a moment and say, I'm going to be fine. Olivia's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. We're here to lose weight. We've done that. We've done everything we possibly can. Hannah, what's going on with you? You know what? Whatever that scale says, I had a lot of victories this week. And so did Olivia. Um, I learned to put the past behind me and to look forward and to live in the now, not the tomorrow, not the yesterday. So whatever that number means, for me, this was a great week. Purple team, in order to guarantee that you are above that yellow line right now and make sure that you are here for one more week, you need to have lost more than eight pounds. Purple team, your current weight is. Back to back to back, Bob. They got the exact same number. Those sisters are in sync. Good job, Purple. Sixes, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, it's it's amazing how different the sixes felt this week than <laughs> last week. Um, this week, I mean, I was really, I was proud of that six. I really was. Purple team, you lost 12 pounds this week for a total percentage of weight loss of 2.58%, which is enough. Get you above the blue team. Above that yellow line, congratulations, Purple Team. You will be here for one more week. We have one team left to weigh in. So either the blue team or the black team is going to fall below the yellow line tonight. And it'll be up to Irene to decide who stays and who goes home tonight. Black team, come on up. Here, black team. Guys, double D's. Double D's. We've been together every day since the day we were born. I would not want to face the battle without him. And I don't believe he would want to face it without me. So. Absolutely not. So um, we're hoping that we can stay together. Black team, in order to guarantee that you are above the blue team and safe from elimination tonight, you need to have lost more than nine pounds. I don't think that there's a snowball's chance in hell that we're going to survive. And I'm not gonna lie, I closed my eyes and I said a prayer. Keep us here one more week. Black team, your current weight is. Coming up, the biggest loser transformation moment See how the eliminated player looks today. The Biggest Loser Club, it's changing lives. Oh my God. Holy. What? Do you want to check that again? I have no idea. I think everyone in that room does a double take. It's like time like stopped. Are you serious? Nine pounds a piece they gained. When I seen that plus 18 pop up, I ain't gonna lie to you, I wanted to drop to the knees and hallelujah to the Lord. It was exhilarating and depressing at the same time. It's like Arthur said, Dad, we're alive, but you know, we are. somebody That's else, it. yeah, somebody else just died. I, I don't know. And how can it be the same? I don't know. It's just, this is just very disappointing because I saw something in the two of you and I was really looking forward to going through this struggle and putting it all here. You don't gain nine pounds on the Biggest Loser Ranch, you just don't. So it was deliberate, obviously, and all I could think about were those thousands of people that wanted to be on this show. I was so offended. I feel like you guys just gave up on us. And that's just really disappointing. You guys don't look bro broken up about it. If I had an explanation for how it happened, I promise I would own up to it. I don't know. I'm sorry that I disappointed Bob and Jillian. I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah. What more can I say? 
I cannot convince you with my words. I've tried that and I, I can't, and certainly not with my actions well, tonight. Your actions have convinced me. I'm not even angry, I'm just sad. The whole thing is just sad. God bless. Well, your opinion, in spite of what you may think, really means a lot to us. And, and I know words cannot convince you, but I promise you my actions will. Okay, well, it'll be up to Irene to make the ultimate decision. So, gentlemen, good luck to both of you. Thank you. Either Dan or Don's gonna go home tonight, and I really do wish them the best. I mean, I, I, I don't want them to fail. I want them to succeed, and I hope that they can do it at home because they sure couldn't do it here. Black team, you gained 18 pounds this week. Plus 3.31%. Bob and Jillian, we're gonna go to elimination now, so it's time for you both to say goodnight. I'm sorry, let's go. I'll make up to you. I don't know what to say, you guys break my heart. I apologize. Break my heart. We'll For fix what? it. We'll fix it. Well, there it is. Blue team. You are safe from elimination. You are above that yellow line, which means you both are here for one more week. Black team, Irene is the only one with the vote at tonight's elimination. So we're going to head over to the elimination room and get this taken care of right now. Well, this has certainly been an unusual week. As you all said, you have been through a lot in three weeks on the Biggest Loser campus. And this week, it showed on the scale. Dan and Don, you each gained nine pounds this week, which put you below the yellow line, up for elimination, and one of you is going home tonight. An unusual turn of circumstances at the challenge you all work together as a group to give Irene the only vote at tonight's elimination, which means that Irene, this decision has fallen on your shoulders. All right, we have often seen at this table people say, in spite of the wishes of the people below the yellow line, that the others maybe see something that they don't. Was there anyone here who had doubts or questions and had concerns? If I watched the show and I saw two people gain nine pounds, I would automatically think that they threw it. I'm not saying that they did that because I saw them put in hard work every single day. And I saw them trying their hardest every single day. So I don't know what happened. And I hope that they can figure it out and make a turnaround because that's what this whole journey is about. It's about if you have a hard time, you push through that and you have breakthroughs. And I hope that. Whoever goes home tonight will figure that out at home, and whoever stays here will be able to figure it out here, and we're going to be here to help you. All right, Irene, why don't you tell them well, how you made your decision? You know, it touched me that you made a statement saying that you can always lose weight here, and you can lose weight at home, but you can't be Maddie's daddy here. And I really take that to heart because my father was never around, and I think that's really commendable. And you definitely have all of our blessings. Thank you. So, I uh, wanted to respect your wishes. I voted for Dan. All right, Dan. Irene's is the only vote tonight, which means that you are not the biggest loser. You are still competing for $100,000 of the at-home prize, and it is time for you to go. For 30 years plus, we've never begun an assignment together that we haven't completed together. And, and while I'll be leaving my brother here, I've got a nine-year-old daughter at home that I've been missing. So for me, it's a bittersweet situation. And I will continue on with this process, and I will be successful. I need to redeem myself to the memory of my son and to my family and to everybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm leaving you behind. <sighs> Not forever. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's not over yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> like when we started this. I'm so sorry. It's going to be okay. okay. All right.
You guys have had a long, difficult week. As Don said, this is just the beginning. And you better get some rest, because there's more coming tomorrow. Bye, guys. It's such a sour note to end on. But if there's one silver lining, it's that Jesse and Arthur get to stay. If I was above the yellow line and they would let me, I would take someone else's place and let them stay. I don't want to take anything away from Bob and Jillian because they're the best and, and they got more out of me than anyone's been able to do my entire adult life. Last hits workout. Let's go. Seven. But it's not going to stop just because they're not around because I've got something infinitely more important to me and my heart than world-class trainers. I've got a nine-year-old daughter who needs me. This is my darling daughter, Madeline. My daughter told me she wants me to get healthier because she doesn't want me to go away like her brother Adam did. And if I couldn't find the motivation to do this for myself or my brother, I guarantee you, I have all the motivation I need with just that one statement from her. <laughs> because if she's worried about me leaving her like her brother did, I can't fail. I just can't. Don, I can't remember the last time you and I started something that I haven't been able to stay with you and carry my load. And I am sorry. We will succeed in this goal that we share. Just keep doing what you're doing, and I'll do it from home, and we'll get back together soon. And I love you. America, the next time you see me, I will be proving that I can be successful at home. And it won't just be words. You'll be able to see the difference. When I started The Biggest Loser, I weighed 287 pounds. I now weigh 215 pounds. I've lost a total of 72 pounds. Leaving the ranch, I definitely felt as though I had something to prove. And um, coming home to my daughter, Madeline, has been a true blessing. It's provided me so much more drive uh, than I had before. Oh, how was your day? Good. I can honestly say that since I got home, Every day has just been joyous, and I'm a better father than I was before. I'm a more active father, more involved father, and I'm doing physical things and accomplishing them, things that I've not done in 30 years. I like the way my dad is now better than before because he's not just sitting on the couch watching TV. He's doing stuff with me and working out. Okay, change direction. I think if he never went on Omega's Loser, he wouldn't be able to um, do the stuff that most girls get to do with their dads. Like, when their dad walks him down the aisle, he would probably be in bed being sick because of his weight. Our family sort of needed this so he could lose weight and be a healthier man. My whole world revolves around my wife and daughter. And uh, making them happy is what makes me happy. <laughs> I'm glad you want to because lose your dad. You are? Why? Because you wouldn't be able to do this with me before. I'm glad to, baby. Made no qualms about it. The Biggest Loser gave to me exactly what I wanted. I wanted to change my life for myself and my daughter. I wanted to lose weight and honor the memory of my son. And I can't remember the last time I was this happy.